Hello and welcome to Dark Lair. Today I'm playing a new game called Sherlock Holmes vs. Arsene Lupin. No idea who that guy is, but everyone should know who that guy is. Um, when I was a kid, I played the Silver Earring. Um, I don't think I finished it. No, I got to the bit where you have to like run after something before it burns, and I failed it and raged basically and gave up. So, from what I've seen to check this works, I think it's by the same kind of people because it's got the same voice as Sherlock Holmes, or like same voices I think, I'm not sure though. Either way, let's start a new game. You are undertaking to portray Sherlock Holmes, the famous consulting detective of 2020, 221 B Baker Street, London. During this case, you must demonstrate both strategy and calm. Observe well the items around you and don't hesitate to click on them. Once you have the required information, you will obtain comments that will help you in the hunt. Do not forget to interrogate anybody who might be able to inform you. Choose the right questions and pay heed to their answers. Assure yourself that you are not you aren't caught short of your adversary. Arsene Lupin will throw a number of challenges at you which will demand you are subtle and methodical. Thus, in the course of your investigations, you will have the need of pencil and paper. Certain riddles will require affection worthy of your hero. It will be challenging. At certain moments, you will need to type a keyword in response to a question in order to continue the adventure. You are at liberty to consult your notes in order to help yourself. Do not forget to read the documents that you will have gathered and glance through Sherlock's notes. They are all important. In order to advance your inquest, you will have to you will have at your dis to, uh, disposition plans and maps which will permit you to, by, to teleport by clicking on given points. You may equally make your character run by double clicking with the left mouse button. England's honour is at stake. Do not disappoint your adversary. Frogwire Games presents The New Adventure of Shadow Games. Sherlock Holmes vs. Arsene Lupin. Arsene. <laughs> Old guy with a top hat? Oh no, maybe no. London, July 14th, 1895. Here's my home. It looks to be the beginning of a lovely day, Holmes. There's nothing like beginning the week with a sunny Monday, with nothing more pressing to do than to see what came in the post. Uh, would you care to take a ride up the Thames today? Oh, sure, say. I think not, Watson. Listen, Holmes, your mood has been getting progressively worse for the past two weeks. I know you, and I am certain that something is bothering you. It wouldn't be bad news from Switzerland, would it? We would already be on a boat heading towards the continent, were that the case, my dear Watson. Very well, then. What is it? Let me guess. For the past two weeks, the papers have talked of nothing other than this French thief, Arsene Lupin. He's been making all of the police officers on the continent look like complete idiots. You're taking an obvious pleasure out of reading these articles. My dear Watson. I've put my finger on it, haven't I? I know you well. Something tells me that you will not entertain talk of this Lupin for some time. Do you recall his latest feat? Using an alias, 
he seduced a young Italian princess in order to rob her of a priceless set of diamond jewelry that once belonged to the Medicis. These jewels were to be part of the lady's dowry on the occasion of her marriage to the son of a wealthy, influential Sicilian. Finally, our friend, having committed his crime, left word for the local press, explaining that there was no other way for the charming lass to escape a marriage of convenience with, I quote, an uncultivated and uncouth boar without the least refinement. Since then, the lady has been confined to a convent, and rumor has it that the two outraged fathers have jointly offered a sum of countless millions of liras for the head, the rest of the body being optional, of the man who is responsible for their dishonor. Are you acquainted with the reputation of the Italian criminal milieu? Why, another letter from the zoo about those missing birds, as if we were going to be running around the whole of London chasing chickens. As I was saying, are you acquainted with the reputation of the Italian criminal milieu? This Arsene Lupin must be in hiding somewhere, surrounded by bottles of champagne and stolen treasures. How foolhardy and arrogant. Oh, these French. However, he didn't pursue this foolishness to the point of risking stepping onto British soil. Ah, uh, ah. Has the cat got your tongue, Watson? What? Uh, um. Uh? Paris died. Whatever is the matter with you, Watson? Pray tell. This letter on the ta table. Holmes, read it. You can show Sherlock Holmes. To move in the game, just left click on your destination you want to reach. Double click will make him run. Good. In this game, you can. Change your playing perspective at will. Press R key or middle mouse button to switch to first person mode. You can use WAST. Keep the button pressed to move your character in first person mode. Pressing caps lock or shift will make your character run. Press R or middle mouse button again to come back to third person. Remember you can change the any time in the game. I think I'm gonna play it in first person to be honest. Let's press space button to put a dynamic help and see all the accessible items from your current position. You can use this button from both perspective modes. Now time to start the game. Find a letter on the table and take it and click on it to take it into your infantry. I think I'm just going to play it with this because it looks a bit better. Before I begin, dear Mr. Helms, before I begin, please excuse any grammatical or spelling errors that you might notice. Your language isn't my native tongue, as I come. Oh, okay. I come from the continent of France. To be exact. <laughs> Don't know why I'm doing for it, but fuck it. In addition, my singular subjects of conversation It's not even boring anymore Whether they be oral or written as the most exquisite food and wine The noblest arts and the servamous women The whole wood knows that the good people of her most gracious majesty Oh, Scottish, screw it, back to Borat. Do not produce or even discern any manifestation of esthetic intelligence and civilization that sets men apart from beasts. Thus, the opportunity to practice a language is what they are brief. What use is there to linger with a lucky or mad? But look, I have, she has made a mistake, a rather irreparable mistranslation. I said to your people of her most gracious blah blah blah. I should have said the people of blah 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 other than you. Can I include you in this half ready face, half pated crowd reeking of bran, bran and chibir? Screw it, I'm just gonna read it normally now. You stand apart an icon, having followed your exploit, exploits even, for some time and being interested in your unusual personality. I started to see you were a man of intelligence, integrity, and singular refinement. 
incredible results in your activities and the manner in which you achieve them are marked with your seal of genius. Believe me, despite the land lamentable opinion that I hold for your in the inhabitants of your island, I have for you an admiration without limit, without roots to its apogee. Recently, recently, when I discovered you have a friend's ancestor, what lucky stars brought you to the world elsewhere, and in the motherland, the motherland I call my own, my own, that should have been your own. Perhaps the gods desired that your presence on this island bring up the intellectual average that was so low it bordered on the absurd. The business that brings me to write this letter may bring an answer to this question. You see, events without extendant will occur in London in the week to come, beginning on the night of the day in which you read this letter. The purpose of these events is to light a fraud to the arrogance and vanity of the English. Is this just like, how many pages is this? Oh god. Bugger it. Enough of the haughty boring composure that the English present present us where passions should be freely expressed. Enough of the derisive confidence in England's I can't, can't, can't read hard for these words. Impregnability, which is displayed by all of its politicians and soldiers. The English fortress is being protected by a sea serving as moats. Enough of your supposed symbols of majesty and endure, grandeur of spirit, which are in fact merely the fruits of looting, looting and plundering. England has measured the world by its stingy superior smile for far too long. Thus I, as you know, oh, Lumpin, have pledged to get rid of this smile. To that end, in the week to come, I pledge to steal five of the most representable symbols of the alleged English grandeur here in London. Once these auspicious achievements have been accomplished, I will exhibit the trophies for the world to see and will reveal the smallness of a nation incapable of preserving its pride. England will become the laughing stock of all nations from the largest to the smallest will have to swallow its pride and lower its head for milli millennia to come. Imagine these self-righteous and prejudiced faces who ordinarily parade the fact that they are not, that they are one of Her Majesty's people, will henceforth hide their origins. Being English will no longer be grounds for pride, but rather shame, and brief the debts will be paid. You are perhaps asking yourself why I've chosen to share ye with you my vision, which many who don't know me would consider mad. <laughs> would consider mad? After all, if my former praises are well founded, you are certainly the only person in England capable of stopping my plan. <laughs> like myself, you are fully aware. Oh, screw it, he's evil. Do it, Borak. Fully aware of the inefficiency and flagrant lack of imagination that plunges your police service. The reason for this letter is immensely narcissistic. No exception of that is desires to produce their work for an uncultured public, incapable of appreciating the true value of his powers and talent. In you, I have found the idea of spectator, and I wish for you to follow the stages of my consecration step by step. In fact, I would almost wish for you to put yourself in my path and in vain to stop me from committing these thefts, but you are a busy man who doesn't like defeat. What a shame. If despite everything, your adventure tempts you away. I shall leave you a few verses to deal with tonight's target. <coughs> All across France, everyone knows, in the blind's kingdom, you only need for one eye for the crown. You treat us like the blind men it shows. T'was a one-eyed, one-armed man who brought us down. 
It is true that we failed, though we tried again. Our fate was nailed, our immortality, our pain. His immortality, our pain. One of the Spanish capes, a desperate pride that hangs around you like drapes. Our suffering makes you snide. An adversary came along in order to protect victory. We are put in the wrong and the day made history. Is that Napoleon? I'm not sure. Save the pain and defeat, the worst in this game. Is that the hero we did meet carries a French name? Clearly did vengeful vengeance sound what I have in mind for this traitor sitting at his master's feet like a hound is to be run aground. Am I honoured tonight to band to Lilith to band? It's not Is that band? I think I looks hand. I will break free for the biding so that all may understand our victory will take the wing. Wait, how do I close this now? No. Oh, that, okay, never mind. Holmes, this is truly unbelievable. Surely this cannot be taken seriously. It's possible, Watson, that this letter is nothing but a prank. However, a small chance exists that both the challenge and the threat are real. What will you do? First, I'm going to enjoy the breakfast Mrs. Hudson has prepared. It will be so good, Watson, as to clarify some of the riddles in the letter. Firstly, if Arsene Lupin is actually the author, as he states, why does he sign with another name? When it comes to the poem, even if an answer seems straightforward, we must be quite certain. What would the target of tonight's theft be if this letter turns out to be accurate? We have one day to find the solution and to take preventative measures. You could go see Barnes, the bookstore in Glentworth Street. Surely they'll have something that will be informative. Control Dr. Watson. So we've basically got to go to a bookstore. What? This accursed statue is still here? I have asked Mrs. Hudson to remove it for us. Holmes's Table for Experiments. A motley collection. No, that's not crouch. I thought it'd be a crouch bin. Okay, I don't know what that is at the bottom one. Oh, what a mess! It was in this statue that we found the famous Black Pearl of the Borgias. My eccentric companion keeps his shag tobacco in the toe of this Persian slipper. Colonel Gordon, it was during the affair of the lodger in treatment. It's a coal bucket in which Holmes stores his cigars. What a strange idea. This is how Holmes organises his correspondence that is awaiting responses. If only his clients saw that. I'm not ready yet, Watson. What? Ticket assistant. Yeah. Okay, so that was a. There's a teleport. And I've forgotten which button it is. Uh, e, okay. It's the bookstore in Glamourworth Street. Bookstore in Glamourworth Street. So. Yeah, wrong button. 
Garnet Forest Street. So, how do I look at where Garnet Forest Street is? Am I in Garnet Forest Street? I have no interest in going there. Okay, so it's not that way. No, I have nothing to ask him. <laughs> no. No, I have nothing to ask him. No. Damn it, Flores. That's. It's a milk. I have no interest in going there. Okay, so it is down that way. Apparently. What's down here? Which I doubt, but. Yep, okay. There's nothing down there. I have no interest in going there. Okay, so power of deduction sets down this way. Barnes bookseller. What's that? I don't know what that is. E. Oh, right, okay, so 